you guys. So the first thing that I've done here is I've just taken some black paint that I use for my latex mask and I've just painted where I want to brush the latex on. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush on layers and layers of latex to build up the base of the mask. Um, you don't have the brush on paint on here like I did, but I did it anyways so it'll make it a little bit easier to see where I went for the latex. And also it'll kind of paint the inside of the mask a little bit. Um, I've gone through the layer paint on the inside of this, but you know it just colors the inside and makes it a little bit nicer. You don't have to do it, but I did it anyways. What I'm trying to avoid is painting latex over the eyes and under the nose because when you get the fabric over the mask, you'll be able to see through the fabric in the eyes. Now on this mask, I cut nose holes out, but on this mask, I'm not going to because it's just going to be fabric over there to allow you to breathe through the mask without having to cut nose holes. So you can see here where the fabric's on the outside, you can see through the eyes and it works like eye mesh on a mask. So that's what we're going to do here with this guy, and all I'm going to do is just take latex and brush it on over this. And when I peel it off, you know, the black paint will come with it. Um, I mix my own paint for using my latex mask. I use one third mask latex that I use to make the mask out of. One third paint. You can either use acrylic paint or latex house paint, one or the other. And then I use one third ammonia. A lot of people use the same mixture, but they use water instead of ammonia. You can use water. I've used it before and it does work. But sometimes over time it'll start to separate from the latex and the paint. I use ammonia because there's ammonia in latex, so it mixes easier and it stays mixed after you mix it. So that's why I use ammonia instead of water. I typically always use ammonia when I mix latex for paint. It's just, it works the best for me and it lasts longer um, after it's been mixed. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take a chip brush. I'm using a one inch chip brush. And I'm just going to brush on a layer of latex on this guy, just as if I was painting it on there. And I'm going to try to do it so you can see what I'm doing, but literally all I'm doing is I'm just brushing latex on over this face. And I'm just going where I put the black paint. Like I said, you don't have to use the black paint if you know what you're doing. You can just avoid these areas as you're brushing on the latex on the mask just avoid around the eyes and under the nose and a little bit of the paint was still wet that I put on there and it's mixing with the latex that's fine it's not going to hurt anything I might get a little bit of paint in my bucket of latex but I don't care it's not a big deal until we do a better job at this but I'm trying to make sure I get it on camera and go around the eyes get under the chin a little bit more to the chin and that's basically it just keep brushing on layers of latex you know I let this dry and then brush on another layer after it dries you can use a hair dryer or a heat gun to get this layer to dry faster in between layers I just might do that but just keep adding on layers and layers and layers until you get the thickness that you want for your mask all right guys so I've done about maybe eight layers of latex over the black paint I have on this guy. One of the good things that the black paint does is that you can see how much, how many layers you have on it. Because latex has a, I don't know what the right word is, I guess opaque okay, is the right word you can use where you can see through it. Because you know, with the first layer that I put over it is kind of like a gray look to it. And the more layers I put on, it kept going to a lighter gray to a lighter gray until we started to get the yellow color, that is the natural latex color. And now. It just looks like latex. You can see some spots where it's thinner, where you can still see the black through it. But uh, yeah, I got a decent thickness on this guy. Um, what I'm about to do now, and I'm going to add one more layer to this, and I'm going to add some cheesecloth to it. Here's some squares I've got pre cut. This is what I'm going to use. I'm not going to use it now for the texture, but this is what I will use for the texture. You can use other fabrics too, like burlap or another type of fabric. But that's not what I'm doing right now. What I'm doing now is I'm using a cheesecloth to help thicken this cast on here, but also to make it stronger and help it keep its shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush a layer on and stick this on here and paint over it again. Another thing that I like to do is in between layers I soak my brush in a cup of ammonia 
So that way my brush doesn't die because latex will kill your brush. You know, it gets these little boogers stuck in it or whatever. But you know, soaking it in ammonia will help keep your brush alive longer so you can keep using it so that way you don't have to use a new brush between every layer. So what I'm going to do now is just add another layer to this thing and I'm going to add the cheesecloth to it. And like I said, that'll help make the calf thicker and stronger. Most of the pieces I cut were just squares, but I did cut a few specific pieces for specific areas. I got one piece, a thin piece here cut for the bridge of the nose. Just going to tack that on there and then go over it with the brush. And this latex is going to soak in here and she's off to start a mask. And I got another strip here that's going to go across the forehead. Tack that on here and go over it with the brush. It's that simple. A lot of people, including myself, sometimes use this inside of molds to make thicker, stronger casts for masks. And you don't have to use cheesecloth. This is what I like to use. You can get it at Walmart, any hardware store. You can also use um, tissue paper, um, paper towels, cotton. And also, you can use this same technique to make like a leather face type mask. Use some toilet paper or tissue paper or cotton to sculpt features on here and to um, add texture to it. You know, it was one thing I was thinking about doing was taking some cotton and making this brow line thicker so we can see it through the mask, but I'm not going to for the sake of the video, but that's something you can do. I got a piece here I'm going to add on the cheek. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do with this technique. A lot of stuff you can do, not just what I'm showing here. And I might do other videos using a variation of this technique for different masks. Like I, like the leather face mask, you can also do scarecrow mask this way. You know, do it over the full head, make sure your head armature is the size of your head or take clay and sculpt on it and you can do a scarecrow mask. I've got a scarecrow over there that I did the same way. There's a lot of different ways you can make a scarecrow. I definitely do plan on doing a video on making scarecrows. And I might do multiple videos on making scarecrows because there's a lot of ways you can make a scarecrow. And what I'm doing, I'm just adding a layer of this over the entire face that will help strengthen the mask. And it will last a lot longer. And also help it keep its shape. Got another little strip here that I'm going to use under the chin. And I want to cut this piece here. I got two places on the sides that needs cheese claw. I'm going to use two different pieces here. Tack that right there. Try not to cover the eyes. Now like I said, you can use this to add features onto the mask that you don't have when your head armature is sculpted, like broaden the nose or the brow line or something. Just play around with this and have fun. There's a lot you can do with it. And I've got another strip here for under the eyes and across the nose. That right there. Paint over it and let the latex soak into it and make it, and make it part of the mask. And go over here above the eyes, and that'll be it. All right, I got a whole layer. Of, drop my scissors. I got a whole layer of cheesecloth soaked in latex on the face of this. I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll move on to the next step. All right guys, so I've flipped this guy fully dry and it's ready for the next step. I've got my black paint that I used on the first step right here. I got my brush with a cup of ammonia. And I've also got a piece of cheesecloth here that I'm gonna use for my texture. It's actually a long piece that I folded over that can fit over the face because you know, just one layer of the cheesecloth is you know, a little bit too thin for what I'm doing, so I got two layers. And we'll trim the outside later when we get to that step. So we'll trim this up a little bit to look like that that we got around here. I'll show you how to do that. Now, first thing I'm going to do is just going to set that to the side. I'm going to take our paint or latex paint. What you're going to have to use is you can just take 
um, just regular latex mixing a little bit of paint. I'm just using this mostly for the color that it has. And we're going to brush that over here and I'm going to show you what to do next. We're just going to cover the whole face except for the eyes and the nose that we want to leave uncovered. And we're just going to brush that on. And you don't want to be too thick, but you want to get the whole thing covered all over on the eye right there. I'll just fix that right now. Just a little bit. Not a big deal. Go ahead and take care of the nose. And while that is still wet, we're going to stick on our piece of cheesecloth. And you don't have to use cheesecloth, you can use burlap or another type of fabric. But I'm using cheese, cheesecloth for a specific mask. And we're just going to stick that on. And we're going to do kind of like what we did with the other layer, where we want the cheesecloth to soak into the latex and become part of the mask. But you don't want it to be too saturated because you want it to keep the texture. The whole point of this mask is to have the cheesecloth texture. You know, you want it to look like it's made out of cheesecloth. So we're just going to tack that one just a little bit. And we're going to take our brush, but you don't want it to be sopping with paint or latex. You want it to be kind of thinned down. You know, if you got too much on it, you can dip it into the ammonia to thin it down. So that way it'll still soak into the cheesecloth and allow the cheesecloth to become part of the mask but still keep the cheesecloth texture. And the reason why I'm going with black instead of white is to help with the paint and I'll show you how to do the paint later. And here where the eyes and the nose and the outside is still white, we'll fix that in just a moment. Alright, that looks to be about done. Now we're going to let that dry. And the reason why I'm using black is because I want this... I'm painting it different from this one. But I still did the same thing for this one like I did with this one, but this one's going to have a different paint job. I want this to look like weathered white fabric. I want it to look white, but it's going to be weathered. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the whole thing black. You now once this paint Once all this paint dries, I'm going to take some worked down acrylic paint and a squirt bottle and I'm going to dye all the rest of this black. So the whole thing is going to be black. And then I'm going to take a chip brush with white paint and I'm going to dry brush over the entire thing and get kind of an effect like this. I painted this like a skull. You know, with this mask, I was going for a voodoo type look, so I went with a skull. But I still did the same thing with this. I painted the whole thing black and then I dry brushed white over top of it. And with the skull, if you want to paint like a skull, really all I did was I just left what parts need to be black, left those black, and then dry brushed the rest of it. And for the highlights where I want it to be whiter, I just dry brushed more white over top of it. And what parts I want to be more shadowy, I didn't really dry brush over it. And that's how I painted this whole thing. All, this entire thing, except for the symbol in the forehead, which is dry brushed. Paint the whole thing black dry brush white over top of it. You know, with a heavier brush for the teeth and then heavier around the cheekbones, around the nose and the brow ridge. Got the temples here. I dry, dry brushed a heavy line here where the temple is at. And then I went lighter here, which right there where the temple first meets is black there and then just a little bit of dry brushing here and then got a little bit lighter as I went out. So yeah, that's how I painted this thing. I used a dry brush to add the highlights to it. And then I just took a regular brush in black paint and painted the voodoo symbol on the forehead. This guy is going to be a little bit different. Painting the whole thing black. And then I'm going to dry brush over the entire thing with white. And I'll probably leave the eyes and the nose a little bit darker. And then I'm probably just going to put a symbol in the forehead. Not sure what one yet. And that'll probably be it. Maybe a blood splatter or something on it. I'm not sure. Um, with this mask, I'm going for like a uh, cult member type look. Like someone who's in a cult. You know, wear this with a robe or something. 
So that's what I'm going for with this guy. So yeah, I'm just going to let that dry and then we'll move on to the next step. I let this dry and you can see what I was talking about, how it's part of the mask now. The fabric, you know, it's soaked in here as part of the mask, but you can still see the texture of the fabric. That's what we want here. You can use the same technique for a lot of different masks, like scarecrows. You can see this scarecrow back here. That's how I made that. I did a sculpture of the basic structure. And this is latex soaked burlap on the outside of that. And that's how I made that scarecrow right here. So you can use this technique for a variety of different stuff. So anyways, what I'm going to do now is I have a squirt bottle with water, black paint, black acrylic paint, and also a little bit of brown acrylic paint. I'm just going to spray this entire thing and you know, stain the rest of this white fabric black. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. Alright, so this guy is completely dry now and he's ready for the next step. So I've got a little thing here. I'm going to put some white paint in. I'm just going to dry brush over this entire thing except for the eyes. I'm going to leave the eyes black. I'm sure most of you know how dry brushing works, but for those of you who don't, basically all you do is I'm going to use a chip brush for this. You just dip it in the paint like that and then you brush most of it off to where the brush is dry. And what that does is it just leaves the highlights and that really pops that fabric texture on here. So I'm just going to dry brush over the whole thing except for the eyes and leave the eyes black. And even here on the outside I'm going to dry brush over that too. Where it's just fabric. I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. I want to mostly focus on the face. You even want to go over the nose a little bit, not too much. I'm just going to dip the brush back in, get a little bit more paint on it. Sometimes the hairs on the brush will come off. You know, these are cheap brushes, so that happens sometimes. Yeah, I'm going a little bit harder in some areas where I want it to be lighter. Like the brow ridge and around the nose. I'm going to go harder here on the chin and the jawline. Alright, I'm going to call that done. You can see here how it pops that texture on the with the fabric. That's what I want for this guy. And if you use burlap, it'll be even more intense, the texture on it. I get it to focus. But yeah, since I didn't go with the skull paint job, I'm going to put more symbols on this guy. I'm going to have a symbol over the mouth and on the cheeks on the forehead on this guy. With this guy, you know, since it was painted like a skull, he only really fit it on the forehead for it to make sense. And this guy doesn't have as much loose fabric here. Now, I want to trim some of this off. I want to show you how I trim it to get it to look all worn out and whatnot. You can take scissors and cut it, but then it's going to have a straight edge. And you can go ahead and fray the edge after you cut it with scissors, but I'm going to do something different. I'm going to cut it and fray it at the same time. And how I do that is just cut it with a knife. I'm going to take my pocket knife and... Some of these have edges I already like. I'm going to leave them as is, but we got a straight hedge here where the fabric is folded over. Just going to take the knife and just cut that off. And as it tears through it, it also frays it as it cuts through it.
and it gives it a nice edge. See, that was a straight edge where the fabric was folded over, and now it's all frayed and messed up and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of it. You know, this side's pretty good too. Uh, it's a little bit rolled over on this side, but I can fray that out by hand. So I'm just going to cut the top and the bottom with a knife and leave the rest because the rest already looks good. You know, I'm going to leave the bottom long since I've got all this extra fabric here. I think it looks nice. I'm just going to cut the bottom. Where the two ends of the fabric meet. Use a good sharp knife. You can also use a razor, but you know, I keep my pocket knife sharp. So, Alright, now well, the bottom's all frayed and messed up and whatnot. Yeah, the dry brush is pretty much dry, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to one of the last steps, and that's the symbols. I should look at reference images, but I can't do that right now because I'm using my phone to record this. Definitely going to have a pin ram on the forehead, so I'm going to go ahead and do that on the forehead. Just using a Sharpie. Now, if I use a Sharpie, I'll go over it with paint, unless if it looks good as Sharpie, I don't know. Sometimes you can get away with just using Sharpie, it depends. Sometimes you use Sharpie and it looks like it was done with Sharpie and we don't want that. Just what I was afraid of happening is what's happening. Sometimes when the paint's not completely dry, it'll come off of your marker, and that's what's happening here. Son of a bitch. So yeah, got that on the forehead. And you could just leave it as is. You can paint it however you want. Um, I want to add some Leviathans here on the cheek. There's one, I added one on the other side. Got another one right there. Um, that looks pretty good just like that. I might leave that, I'm not sure. Um, I'm gonna add a little pitchfork over the mouth. So there's that. And I'm just gonna leave it as is. I like that, how that is. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel it off the face. So you know here this loose fabric is, and you just move that out of the way and just kind of roll up the edge of the latex that you brushed on. And then just try to peel it off. Alright, got it peeled off, now you've got a mask. Now oh, the eyes are pretty thin, you can see my flesh through it. I might put some mesh in behind that, I'm not sure, I just might leave it as is. And whoever buys it, if they want to wear it, they can wear makeup underneath of it. You can see the inside, and the black paint. There was some stuff stuck in the armature that peeled off with the paint, that's fine. I'll just paint on a layer behind that to cover that up. For the straps. I'm going to do for the straps, so I'm just going to take some fabric and cut two pieces out of it and tie it off to the to the sides. I'll show you how I do that. Do that for both of these. Because I want these to look like they're homemade. Which they are homemade, but I want them to look homemade. Um, but yeah, I like how that turned out, and this guy will be for sale. I might go over these symbols with some paint to make them darker where you can see them better. But yeah, that's pretty much how I make these guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. For the straps for the mask, I'm using some of this fabric that I've cut into strips. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to weather these strips up, I'm going to tatter the edges of them, and I'm going to soak these and stain them with coffee so that way they look dirty. And I'm just going to use those for the straps on the mask. Okay, to attach the straps to the mask, all I did was poke a hole on the side of the mask, thread it through, 
and tie a knot on the end and that's it. I put two straps on each side and the wearer will tie each strap together once they get on their head. So yeah, that's pretty much it to these masks. These guys are done.